talking a lot about soil testing on recent shows. Today we wanted to focus on phosphorus, sulfur, and micronutrients. Well, I can see we got that height issue settled now. Now Brian's up on the hill, so he's almost as tall as me. This is, this is crazy, but yes, there are a lot of things to look at on the soil test. It's not just nitrogen or potassium, but some of the things that are big, like phosphorus, are really important and confusing on soil tests. There's different ways of testing for phosphorus in the soil. There are three main tests that we like to talk about with phosphorus, the weak bray, the strong bray, and the Olson test. Let's start with the bray test. The weak bray, or P1 test, will tell you what's available for phosphorus in your soil in terms of parts per million. The strong bray will tell you the total soil phosphorus that's out there. Okay, so those are two tests and we think those are a little more accurate in lower pH soils. The Olson test is, we believe, a little bit more accurate in higher pH soils. So if you've got a soil pH of over seven, we like to look at the Olson test, and that will tell you available soil phosphorus in higher pHs. Now, when you're looking at these phosphorus tests on your, on your soil test, they're going to be expressed to you in parts per million. You say, okay, well, parts per million is nice, but uh, how many parts per million do I need out there? And for me, I don't like thinking about parts per million. I like thinking about pounds because I know how many pounds a corn crop or a soybean crop or a wheat crop is going to remove from the soil. So I'm looking at the crop nutrient removal needs of my crop and I'm saying, well, wait a minute, I need 60 pounds and I've got so many parts per million. This doesn't make sense. All you have to do is multiply times two. And the reason why we say that is in three inches of soil, in an acre, there's roughly a million pounds. So if you're taking a six inch soil test, well, six inches by an acre is roughly two million pounds. So all you do is take your parts per million, let's say you had 12 parts per million, multiply that times two, you have roughly 24 pounds per acre. If you're shooting for 60 pounds, well, you have a pretty good idea how much more phosphorus you need overall. Let's move on to sulfur. Well, sulfur is one of those things that I usually get a chuckle out of because Brian gets all up on, on his high horse and he says, you know what, we used to get all our sulfur in this country for free from pollution and now we don't and this is terrible. And I say, look, <laughs> move to another country where pollution is really bad and you can have all the sulfur you want for free. I'd rather live here and have cleaner air. Well, seriously though, the, the, point, oh, is, no. the point is this. <laughs> You used to get this sulfur for free, you don't now. You have higher yield goals now, you need more sulfur now, and you're not getting that free sulfur. So if you have not been fertilizing with sulfur on your farm, we strongly suggest you take a look at that. Sulfur is also leachable. Nitrogen, sulfur, and boron are the three most leachable nutrients. So if you get big rains, you have lighter soil, your sulfur might move down below your root zone. So you may need to add sulfur every single year. That's what we're doing on our farm. The other thing I like is that we're actually in a wheat field today and we're talking about sulfur and it's not a coincidence. The sulfur needs of an 80 bushel wheat crop are actually more than the sulfur needs of a 200 bushel corn crop. You're gonna take more out of the ground with 80 bushels of wheat than you are with 200 bushels of corn. So if you're a wheat farmer and you say, oh, I don't need to know about all this stuff, yeah, you do, sulfur's important. Well, we don't have much time to spend on micronutrients today. We will talk about that more later this fall. I guess the main thing I wanted to stress with micronutrients is you've got to at least look at them. If you haven't been adding any micronutrients to your farm, you may be losing yield because of that. On our farm, we're using a blended micronutrient product. It has been increasing yields for us. And you know what, to fertilize with all the micronutrients you need for a whole year, it probably will only cost you five or 10 bucks. It's nothing in the grand scheme of things when you look at a whole crop. So make sure that you're doing a complete soil test this fall that does have micronutrients so you can see where you're at. Well, soil testing is really important, Brian, but so is weed control. We've got a tough weed of the week coming up next.